everybody this is aniket pachapur and we are going to see what our modern honey pots are and analyze the data that we've gathered using uh, certain honey pots which we'll see in a while so honey pot is used uh, to at lure attackers into thinking it's a real system so the real systems are protected and we can see the defending team or the blue team can see how exactly uh, the attackers are trying to get into the system and compromise it so moving on uh, these are the honey pots that we've used uh, so we'll cover them in a while uh, some of them are low interaction medium interaction high interaction meaning that uh, the low interaction uh, honey pots are easily detected and they don't emulate the whole system and the logs are limited the medium and honey pot medium and high interaction honey pots are more interactive meaning that they emulate uh, it as a real system and they are harder to detect and at the same time now, there are different types of logs that can be analyzed and in the higher interaction and imports we can even replay the sessions of what exactly that attacker has done which we will see in a while so false positive and negatives are important part of the security information security domain so in we have to consider this in the honey pots as well so in the ENISA proactive detection of security incidents document says that the honey pots are less prone to false positives uh, let's see what else have they mentioned. So they do the honeypots do not detect the attack directly aimed at production resources. Therefore, IDS IPS have a better coverage, meaning that uh, you have to use honeypots and IDS IPS as complementary technologies, which is pretty good. But and another one of the reasons, uh, important points, being that the client honeypots and the server honeypots. Client honeypots are more prone to higher false positive. Why? Because they deal with production traffic and they are more ag aggressive and they uh, detect malicious servers and interact with them so they deal with production traffic and server honeypots are deal with non-production traffic meaning that they are less prone to false positive and negatives uh, because they are not aggressive and they didn't go and, don't go and attack they just detect attacks and understand how what the attacker is, is trying to do in, uh, inside the server honeypot Another important aspect that we are going to understand is in the recent years there have been attacks on the power grid. So we'll see uh, three various uh, perspectives from where the attacker can intrude into the power grid. So one being the command and control system where the attacker gains entry, gains access to the SCADA master system and executes command from there since it's a master system. Another one being that uh, the Access gain, the attacker gains access to the normal workstation within control site and mounts the man in the middle attack, hence uh, compromising it. The second one being that the attack from the network and the substation, it is possible that some of the substations uh, intentionally or unintentionally get connected to the internet, uh, public network, and the attacker can then use it for to deal more damage. and. The another point being that if there's a wireless communication, the attacker can use the wireless cellular communication using man in the middle attack. They can also establish row base station. Uh, so once they do that, they can execute commands from there. So the third scenario being from the VPN. So the communication between the command and control servers and substation, uh, it is highly possible that it uses VPN. So what the attacker can do is uh, he can use a phishing attack and if anyone falls for that, he can get the credentials and intrude using VPN, which is pretty dangerous. So what this paper covers here and uses is uh, they use open source tools, honeypots. Uh, so they try to, they conclude by saying that they try to uh, retain the attackers into the honeypot for longer periods and see from where are exactly they are trying to attack and what they are trying to do so as to prevent them uh, prevent the future attacks and uh, secure certain parts of the security architecture moving, moving on so this is one of the cowry uh, honeypots that we've used cowry is medium to high interaction honeypot uh, it's based on the kipo sensor but has more advanced features in the so it emulates uh, Linux system and acts as SSH telnet proxy and it also lets you record the session of the attacker which is pretty nice. So Kauri gives us at the top username and password combination attacks attempted which we can see over here the top most being nproc nproc and the count. Uh, so another so it Kauri also stores the logs logs 
in the cowry.log file and one of the snippet in the logs being this command that the attacker has executed so this uh, what this command exactly means is that attack attacker is trying to monitor the memory usage of the system exactly pinpointing it he is trying to see the cached memory so the awk command uh, is used where uh, the system or the process contains rules compromised of patterns and actions as you can see over here so this is what this is exactly what has the, the attacker is trying to has tried to do and we've got it in the cowry.log file uh, so let's see what cowry does in the high interaction part so as you can see here we're uh, going to check one of the hashes in the downloads folder and we are going to select it select the hash based on the size so we, we are going to select the highest uh, the largest size one so as you can see we've selected this one and you can see the size here the date november 8 148 which is crucial for us so we can go back and replay the session in a different folder and we can match the time of it so let's see what happens when you go ahead and try to re replay this so as you can see we've gone to another folder where the sessions have been saved by kauri and this is the same date and time so the timestamp of it and it matches and the size is also different as well so let's see what happens So as you can see the see here there's it says the no such file or directory so the session is is, ha, is not being played which means that the malware has been deleted by the attacker or the malware itself has removed it removed the whole thing we can confirm this hypothesis by checking another uh, session and let's see what happens so as you can see this is what Kauri does. It says that it's a Linux system, as you can see. And uh, as you can see, this has changed root at server, which is the Kauri uh, interface used by the attacker. And the, let's see what the attacker has done. So we can successfully say that the, the attacks and the replays, replay of the session can be played. Moving on, uh, this is at the top MD5 malware hashes that uh, we've captured using Dynia and integrated with Splunk. So all of them being a WannaCry malware and but different variants of it, ransomware, crypto miners. So each attacker uh, changes. So depending on what system you are going to attack and your end goal, the adversary and attacker change, can change that type of malware and use it to their advantage for mining crypto or uh, as a ransomware. Moving on, one of the unique uh, honeypots is the TruePot honeypot, which is an open source web content management system written in PHP language emulating honeypot. So, if you go onto the web page uh, of this uh, honeypot, uh, so you, the attacker can launch web application attacks. So, one of the log files contains uh, the following message in the body which is encoded in base64 uh, as you can see over here and when we decode it uh, we get to know that the attacker has used the get request uh, to understand what operating system the honeypot is using as you can see and the IP so one of the unique log that we have gathered is that we captured an attack attacker attempting to exploit remote code execution RC in the GPON home router so there had been uh, uh, an attack on the GPON routers and millions of routers had been compromised so let's see how this works so what I think the, the the vulnerability must have been patched by now so what exactly happens in this so router saves the results in the temporary folder and transmit it to the user when the user accesses the dialog dot di diagram dot html or the gpon form as you can see over here and transmit its back so hence it's easy for the attacker to execute commands and retrieve output as you can see over here so there are two cves uh, for this common vulnerabilities exposure so one being the authentication bypass and another being command injection so it's a chained 
exploit. So the attacker bypasses the authentication and then injects commands into it. So another sensor we can we've covered is Amun and we've got this hash, hash which has been confirmed by virus total and this malware is cross verified by Trend Micro as the lemon duck crypto miner first spotted in 2019 taking advantage of the pandemic and alien vault engines have also identified it as a crypto malware. So how Hamoon works is that uh, it detects port scans on the request handler and there's only single IP so which we've traced for this attack and there has been port scan on four Firefly at this date and time timestamp and then the download method has been offered and the exploit.log captures the exploit as soon as the attacker tries to exploit it with the Aminix domain that we've identified in the log. So once the binary has been successfully download, downloaded only then the successful download log confirms it and logs it as you can see over here. So the, moving on to the next one, Elastic Honey Pot is one of the NoSQL. Uh, no, it uses a NoSQL database and logs the searches. So SQL queries don't work on this but it does log uh, different searches. So this payload is a new crypto mine, miner malware with a goal to mine Monero cryptocurrency using XM rig and this init.sh script is specifically for the Linux part which is the initial payload. So there are two CVEs below, one of them 1427 being the GUI script using the GUI script engine and attacking only affecting only a certain versions of Elastic Honey especially before 1.4.3 which allows remote attackers to bypass sandbox, sandbox protection. Another one being the 3120 which lets attackers execute arbitrary MBEL expressions and the Java code. So this attack is uh, one of the latest ones which have been identified in June 2020. Moving on to the snort, uh, this is the IDS which detects attacks and categorizes them into three variants. GPL being the oldest, emerging threats being the current ones and the vulnerability research team which is managed by Cisco Talos team. Uh, so moving on, what we've uh, what Snort has detected is a SIP vicious scan attempted information leak on port 5065. So SIP is a session initiation protocol used in voice over IP, VOIP. So this is a priority. All three of the detections are priority three scans. Moving on, the second one being the ET, another ET scan, uh, which has detected a network scan. So third one being the most unique, which is uh, IPC Unicode share access. Uh, so if we go on to check this paper, uh, IPC share exploit methodology of Chinese attackers by Bernard Khan in his GCIH practical assignment. Uh, we can, what we've understood is that once this, once the Windows NT server, if the Windows NT server is not protected by firewall or the internet, the attacker can gain access to it. And the worst case being, we can, the attacker can gain full admin control uh, of the system including the graphical user inf interface, which is pretty uh, dangerous. So the POF is a fingerprinting tool which has detected 264 nmap since scans from the attackers and top three devices identified here and the top three OSS operating systems identified. In Dynia, we've captured, as we had saw, seen, we had captured the malware, different top malwares, and it has also detected the top countries that have attacked the honeypot and the top ports being attacked and this is the honey db which we've gathered and it has shown as of this date which services have been at attacked and the count for the same so concluding uh, this the organizations need to be clear on their end goals and objectives as to how they want to implement it if they want to be aggressive they can use client honeypots or if they want to just detect the attacks and prevent uh, them uh, more on the defensive part, they can use server honeypots. Another important aspect that we can we have to understand is that dynamic dynamic honeypots. So in this paper, it has been covered very uh, nicely, which says that the dynamic honeypots uh, change themselves according to the latest updates, and so that the team doesn't have to uh, look into it, and the attackers can be uh, won't detect that it's a honeypot so it updates itself atom automatically which is a really good part for the organizations they can consider so the combination is of the honeypots are also important like one of them should be an IDS IPS along with fingerprinting tools and uh, one of the honey one of the crucial honeypots being Kavi where, where the defending team can see exactly what the attacker has been has been doing 
so another main important aspect that the organization organization need to consider is the real data and the jurisdiction and the laws where they have deployed the honeypots and the industry they are working in so we have not covered conpor uh, which is used which detects industrial control systems attacks so uh, that's it thank you